reason why we did ESA Sky is because uh, we asked scientists in ESA, both at ESA and STEC, how what would their dream interface to data would be like. And from everything they told us, we constructed this work cloud and we figured out that the, what they desperately needed was to have quick access to the data, which sometimes is easier than others. So we are we we set ourselves to develop something called ESA Sky, which is a web application that I'm gonna demo to you in a minute, which sits in front of all the mission archives and uh, in simplify in a, and offers data to the users in a simplified way. It will fetch files from the underlying mission archives, and here you see that of course it 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 all it also does it already with with some of the Gaia tables. Uh, and the whole purpose of this tool is to simplify access to these data such that users don't need to know all the details. So users of this application are going to be shown physical uh, words, no terminology from space missions. And we've always, we will always keep by definition this tool pointing to the latest, the highest quality data from all the different, from all the different missions. So if you come here, you should expect to always get the latest versions of all the catalogs or all the pipeline products, etc., etc. It's already there. It was released uh, uh, this year in May, and we are actually we will we will welcome very much you to uh, to invite you to to use it, to try it, and to let us know how could this tool be improved to make your work with Gaia data better. In terms of contents, uh, the first release was in May, and we are planning a second release by the end of this year, which contains Gaia data and uh, we actually have already one of the one of the big catalogs from data release one and I'm, I'm going to show it to you very quickly in terms of functionality the first version shows you only imaging data and catalogs that's why that's why we have also already the Gaia data version two will have also spectroscopy and version three will have time domain functionality so you will be able to see visualize things as a function of time but it, but we think it's already useful to, to show you how to access Gaia data also through this interface because it allows you extra simple visualization features to the Gaia data that maybe you cannot find so easily somewhere else. So let's go to the application. This is what you see when you go to the, to the application. You just find a, a, a little piece of the sky. Uh, you can zoom in or out. These are, uh, these, are, these are based on all sky maps generated with, this, with the Hillpix tessellation developed by by the CDS uh, Centre de Donetas Astronomique de Strasbourg uh, that allows to visualize huge amounts of data in these tessellated sky maps that are always light in memory, okay? Uh, the nice thing here is that you can, of course, just click and drag, and if you come here, you can see the exact same part of the sky as you were seeing it in optical, you can see it in, in x-rays. So this is how this exact part of the sky looks like in x-rays. Uh, you can also see how that looks in, in uh, in uh, ultraviolet, for example, we've seen already the optical, which is DSS. So for, for the near infrared and for two mass, we have uh, we have two mass for near infrared and Ys for mid infrared, and uh, and then we also have for in far infrared we have Herschel. You can do this kind of tricks with anywhere in the sky, and because of these maps are progressive, they will adapt the zoom the the, the zoom level will adapt and give you the, the lightest memory with the highest pixel resolution that you can get at that zoom level. So once you have once you've arrived to this uh, once you have arrived to this position, you can swap and blink between the maps very quickly just by clicking here. You can of course do the same thing if I, for example, go to you can ah okay on this top right you can search by co object name or coordinates and this will take you anywhere you want. So if I now, for example, want to look at the let me let me choose for example the optical which is the the G digitized sky survey. If I if I want to go for example to the galactic plane and look how that if I want to look at how that uh, galactic, ah, oh, sorry, galactic center, okay, this is what the galactic center looks like in optical. It's not very, it's not very remarkable. If we zoom out sufficiently, you, you can see a dark lane there. Of course, that's where all the nice, fantastic uh, astrometry from from Gaia is gonna give us a lot of information. I can put this in galactic coordinates over there, and then I can search on on, on equatorial or galactic coordinates, uh, and then I can do the same trick of looking at the galactic center in different wavelengths. So if I now uh, if I now want to see how this looks as seen by two mass, this is what this looks like. If I want to see how, how it looks as seen by Herschel, 
this is what it looks like. And now I here I want to stress that what you're seeing here, regardless of the fact that it's pretty, it's pipeline products. It's the highest quality pipeline product that we've been able to produce with the Herschel data. And because of the um, hierarchical progressive nature of these maps, you can zoom in and explore freely. And this is real science data for here, here for you to explore. You might, you might see here a little square, a little darker square. That's because that bubble there, it's called RCW120, was subject of a particular pointing. So a particular set of observers wanted to observe that particular bubble because they, it has triggered star formation. You can see that there are uh, new objects being formed around the bubble. Uh, they studied this object in, in particular and there was a press release about it. And the nice thing when we put all this data together in a nice map for you to explore is that you can just scroll around the galaxy and you're going to find lots of other bubbles like that one. And this is all here for you to explore and have fun with. Uh, of course, this is not just a visualization. It's, not for, it's meant for scientists. So one of the applications that, that we have is that, of course, we can download images. But I'm not going to show you that. It's very easy to do. Once, once you go to some particular object of your interest, you can um, open this data panel here. Let me open this. And this, here's where you can compare the, the images, these progressive images, with individual images from the mission. So the histogram on the left, imaging observations, will give you direct access to all the observations ever obtained in this, in this particular part of the sky. So if I click, if I come to the X-ray bar, and you see it's all physical, it's physical language. There's no mission acronyms here because we want we did a, uh, the effort to simplify the process for non-experts. If you come here and if you hover on the X-ray bar, it will tell you that in the soft X-ray range, there are 11 observations from XMM Newton. And if you click on them, you will get the footprints of those observations on top of the image and a table here with the, met with the exact metadata for those objects. So you can select any of them and then you can click on this little diskette, which we realize it's an old-fashioned icon because all the young generation don't know what, what that is. And you can download the FITS files directly for those observations without, without having to log in or anything. This is all public data, so there's no need to register or anything. We'll keep our download statistics uh, based on the IP addresses. You can do this with all these missions. Here we have Integral, Susaku, XMM, HST, ISO, and Herschel. Just go there. All the files that you're going to download are science-ready FITS files, which have what the mission specialists have selected for non-specialists as the best single image, best single FITS file for that observation. But of course, you are, you are probably here a lot more interested into, into catalog and point sources. Uh, together with the Gaia data, which I'm going to show you in a minute, you can also come here and say, okay, what about source catalogs? Are there source catalogs in this particular piece of the sky? And then you can, if you come here and hover on top of the X-ray bar, it will tell you, okay, there are 170 sources from the 3XMM catalog. And these are these little blue squares. So we've got a table with the sources here. And, and the sources are also here. If you click on them, you get a little, you know, tooltip with more information about that particular source. These things are links to the corresponding mission archives where you can actually get a lot more detail about how that source, you know, which observation does it belong to and how, or how was it generated. And actually, if we compare this with the X-ray image, you will actually see that the sources match pretty well the sources that you would see with your eyes. And that's why we think this is useful for for all of you interested in the Gaia data that you can, uh, so I'm going to show you in a minute, you can put the Gaia catalogs and visualize and compare them with images from, from all these wavelengths in just a few seconds with a few clicks without having to download anything or register. Okay, so we've checked those x-ray sources. As you can see, it's very interesting. There are lots of, you know, very simple discoveries that one can do just by doing that. What I'm just doing now, I'm showing you, you ultraviolet sources around this galaxy. There are of course, a lot more in the, in the plane of M82. I can also do the same with optical. And in optical, we have, we have the Hubble source catalog, version 1, which will be soon updated to version 2. We have the Hyparcos 2. We have Tycho 2. And we also have the Gaia DR1 for now, just TIGAS. So I'm going to show you uh, if, if there's any TIGAS data in, in some field, you will, in this optical bar here of the catalogs, you will, get, you will get a little piece of the bar, which is Gaia Tigas. So I'm going to show you, for example, now 
how you can actually look at the, for example, the Hubble source catalog. I didn't mention that in the optical, we've also done some work of uh, doing these uh, very large all sky progressive maps with all the HST images. So you can do and explore this the same as we were doing with others. This is all HST ACS observations. And if I zoom in here, you will see that it tells me in this part of the sky, there are 22,000 sources from the Hubble source catalog. And if I click on that, all these yellow sources are sor uh, sources detected by, Hubble, by the Hubble Space Telescope. And it's the same, I can click on them and, and they will tell me, you know, whatever magnitudes. You see, we've put a simplified version of all the metadata for those catalogs because we just want people to be able to very quickly find out whether there is something. Essentially, here the idea is just to do that. And of course, you can also have radio. So if you, if you zoom out sufficiently, you can also uh, pull out the, the Planck catalog, the Planck source catalogs. So how many of you did you know, how, how many of you know, knew that there were three full sky Planck catalog sources of submillimeter objects? Well, there, there it is. Uh, fantastic data as well. Of course, a bit larger PSF than anything else that you're used to work with, but it's there, you can cross match it, you can put it on top of any image. And now let me show you, for example, how is it like to work with Gaia data, because this is obviously what you probably want to, want to see. So now let me go to NGC 2527. This is a, this is a nice cluster. You, you can zoom in, you can zoom out and just see a like, very nice uh, piece of the sky here. You can zoom in or out as much as you want. That's the beauty of this. It's really free. You, you, you don't need to specify a cone search. Just, just go somewhere and zoom as, until you're happy with what you get. So here I can look and this is going to tell me, let me, I can remove, of course, you can also do this to compare with Tycho 2 or with Hyparcos 2 visually. So if I come here and I, and I, I click on the, on the, on the Tycho, on the TIGAS table, I will get all these little, all these little squares on top of the sources. So you can actually visually inspect, of course, uh, you are all aware that because of the time difference between when the observations, this DSS uh, survey was done and, and the Gaia data, there might be offsets. Regardless of that, you can still see that the matches are relatively okay. Uh, we have put in this table here the proper, the, the positions with their accuracies, parallaxes with their errors and proper motions and the, and the average, uh, the mean G magnitude. And one, of course, you can hear, if, you, if you're satisfied with this, you can come to this little, this little uh, eye icon here on the top, and this is telling me how many sources there are. If I zoom out a lot, I, get, I start to get too many, and then because we want the application to be fast, we cut it to 2,000. So if I zoom out and refresh the, the search, um, it will be, at some, I, I will click on this refresh, it just searches again into the database and then shows me all the sources, and then here I have uh, uh, below 2,000, but if I go even farther away, I load the, the sources, and then it tells me, okay, I'm showing you just the, two, the 2,000 brightest objects. That's, uh, that's just says that it's fast, okay? So once I'm here, let me actually zoom in a little bit because I want to get them all. I want, I want to have a complete sample in this part of the sky. Uh, so I can click on this little uh, diskette icon and download this as CSV or VO table. No, I mean, no need to uh, register in, part, in this case particularly. And there is another nice feature which is enabled thanks to the, uh, to, thanks to the VO, the Virtual Observatory, which is that this little button here which says send table to some app. That, it means, that just means that if, if there is any VO, any Virtual Observatory tool that can listen to messages will get this table, so I click here and then this says, okay, the following, this application is sending a table, do you accept the connection? Yes. And the table appears here in my top cap. And as, um, as, Matt, as, as Mark already showed very, very, very nicely the other day, uh, here I have full access to this table, just the selection, and I can do very quickly the, the, the simplest search for, uh, in the proper motion space, and then I can very quickly discover that actually here, there is a cluster in the proper motion space. So I can, this is of course just for demo, I can select a little group here and say, okay, let's say, let's call this my cluster. I can add a subset and then I can, and I can look at the parallax distribution for these sources. And I just do a histogram with the parallaxes, which are also here. And then I also ask, 
as TopCat to show both. And if I zoom in here, you will discover that, interestingly, there's, there's a cluster which we knew, but the, the beauty here, we think, is that you can do this, the same type of very quick exploration of data, anywhere in the sky. And, uh, and that's, uh, you know, that's why we thought it would be useful to show this to you. Final thing, because uh, we need to go for lunch, if you zoom out completely, uh, you get the whole sky, okay? And then let me go to the galactic center again. So you get the whole sky, and then uh, you might want to, you, you could ask, so what happens if I want to get all the XMM, all the X-ray observations from XMM in the whole sky? Well, we cannot give you the many thousands of observations, and what we have done to simplify your life is to make a, uh, to create something called MOC, which is another protocol from the, VR, from, from the virtual observatory, which is a simplified full coverage map, which is also a Hilpix map. And this is, this is, the, this is the combination of all the, all the X-ray XMM observations ever taken in the sky, in, in this half of the sky, for you to explore. And I can bring up the same, for example, all the ultraviolet observations. So what you see here is all the ultraviolet observations. Uh, you can also do the same with HST observations. And now I'm going to make you, and I'm, I'm going to make you a little question, because HST has been observing for so many years. Uh, of course, there are a lot more HST observations than observations from many of the missions, and you might realize all these little yellow uh, squares are actually actual HST uh, uh, footprints of the observations, which have been simplified. And I have a question for you: What would you guess is this line that crosses? The galactic, the galactic plane is here. There is another line here, which has been heavily observed by HST. What would you guess that is? Anyone there? Correct, the ecliptic. Lots of planets. If you actually uh, zoom into those stripes, you will see pictures of Jupiter following each other, because Hubble has been following them up. And there have been lots of them over the times. You can, of course, do the same with uh, Herschel. And then uh, this is going to show you all the Herschel far infrared observations ever taken, and with ISO and with and with also Susaku data, which is an X-ray mission. And uh, we think this is really cool because it gets you access to a, some sort of data, which is, this is showing all the observations ever taken in this full range of wavelengths from X-rays to radio or submillimeter in just one map and without you having to deal with the complex data that is lying behind, this is taken care of uh, by, the, by the software. So uh, that, that was more or less what I wanted to show you. There are, there are a few other features. You can, for example, also make a snapshot. So you can go to some region, uh, select, uh, put on the TIGAS catalog on, on any region, and then make a screenshot of that for your proposal or for whatever you want. And, uh, and then you can also send the application to some given position. So for example, you can start it say, with sending it to certain object uh, with certain wavelength, and it will start up like this. Uh, and then well, there's a whole help that you can probably just check here if you're interested. The whole point of the presentation is to let you know that Gaia Data Tigas is already there, that we'll keep adding, of course, the full table and all the subsequent data releases. And uh, we just we we would like to welcome your your feedback on it because this is just another way of exploring Gaia data, and I think this is it. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>